Hi everyone. Hi everyone. In this video, Apostle Joshua Selman will be teaching us on how to engage the promises of scripture for our life. This video will bless you powerfully. Be prepared to be blessed by this video production. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much and God bless you. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. There is good in every land. Abuja is a good land. Lagos is a good land. Zamfara is a good land. Is that true? Europe is a good land. Canada, America, anywhere across Africa, no matter how politically degenerated, respectfully speaking, that nation is, the Bible still says there is good in every land. But your portion only comes to you if you are willing and obedient. Hallelujah. <laughs> Someone once told me that he came, I think he came to his office in the morning and he saw some, a physical, some kind of charm, the, the, you know, grounded pepper, that you are still seeing the seed. Red hot pepper, they just poured it in, <laughs> in front of the person's office. And I asked the person, what did you do? You know, and the person was, ah, so this is how they want to program a hard life, a painful life. You know, the way Pepe is to the eyes, I said, look, my friend. Oh, I, now, I don't, I don't downplay that. We, we have to deal with people based on the realms we meet them. There are realms where you have to sympathize with them, take it easy and explain their victory. There are realms where you just pass and move on. When Archbishop Benson Idahosa, they brought, I think, a chicken or something, for incantation and they went to cook it and eat it because a body without a spirit is dead instead of wasting the body too you remove the spirit and eat it <laughs> hallelujah welcome to chat now channel we are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in god's presence the bible says in psalm 119 verse 130 the entrance of thy word giveth life as you listen and watch May you experience the transformative power of God's life. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. That the promises on their own, knowing them is important, but until they are engaged, they cannot deliver. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45 blessed is she that believe for unto her there shall be a performance of those things that were told her by the mouth of the Lord just because the Lord said it does not mean that there will be a performance there is another factor that is responsible for performance faith to engage the promises to deliver in one word you have learned here that faith is obedience in one word faith is obedience there cannot be obedience until there is an instruction you see if I do not ask you to come and you start walking here people are safe to interpret it as worry wandering around or madness your movement is only called obedience if I ask you to come are we together now Job chapter 36 and verse 11. Job 36 and verse 11. God is changing someone's life. If they obey and serve him, the Bible says, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Is that in your Bible? The condition. Don't just say, I claim prosperity. I claim pleasures. That is a blind, ignorant believer's approach. If they obey and serve him, so make sure your obedience is in place, your service is in place. Then the latter becomes a reality in your life. Isaiah 119. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. There is good in every land. Abuja is a good land. Lagos is a good land. Zamfara is a good land. Is that true? Europe is a good land. Canada, America, 
anywhere across Africa, no matter how politically degenerated, respectfully speaking, that nation is, the Bible still says there is good in every land. But your portion only comes to you if you are willing and obedient. Hallelujah. <laughs> Someone once told me that he came, I think he came to his office in the morning and he saw some a physical some kind of charm they they you know grounded pepper that you are still seeing the seed red hot pepper they just poured it in front, <laughs> in front of the person's office and i asked the person what did you do you know and the person ah, so this is how they want to program a hard life a painful life you know the way pepper is to the eyes i said look my friend oh, i now i don't i don't downplay that we, we have to deal with people based on the realms we meet them. There are realms where you have to sympathize with them, take it easy and explain their victory. There are realms where you just pass and move on. When Archbishop Benson Idahosa, they brought, I think, a chicken or something for incantation and they went to cook it and eat it because a body without a spirit is dead. Instead of wasting the body too, you remove the spirit and eat it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1. I like this one. 28 from verse 1. It shall come to pass, 1, not 19, 1. Shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. Are you seeing conditions there? To observe and to do all that I command thee this day, that the Lord your God shall set thee on high. Above how many nations? Please talk to me above all nations of the earth do you really believe this look my little children saying i believe it may god bless them our koinonia children celebrate them again by the time they get to our level they will be by far better than us in the name of jesus next verse verse 2 Deuteronomy 28 and all these blessings what blessings these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shall hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God be patient while we read verse 3 what are the blessings blessed shall thou be in the city is Abuja a city that means I must be blessed in this city blessed shall thou be in the field the field is where you sow your business your work your ministry whatever it is to be blessed means you are empowered to excel. You are empowered to prosper. Verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Shout amen. amen. That means you will never give birth to any stubborn child who will become an armed robber. Say amen. amen. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Please keep it media. And the fruit of your ground. I would not sow in futility. Blessed shall be the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Verse 5. It says, Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. 6. Blessed shall thou be when thou come in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. There are people who are only blessed when they come in. They are not blessed when they go out. There are those who are only blessed when they go out. They are not blessed when they come in. The Bible gives us the portrait of a blessed man that you are blessed both when you come in and when you go out. Say amen. amen. Verse 7. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before your face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Verse 8. This is for you now. The Lord shall command the blessing upon your storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hands to do. And he shall bless you in the land which the Lord God giveth thee. Reading to 12 verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee. If thou wilt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Verse 10. It says, all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by
by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you verse 11 the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods and in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give you verse 12 let's read it together the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure the heavens to give the rain to thy land in his season uh -huh. and to bless all the works of thy hand and thou shalt lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow I believe this I am not a curse I am a blessing you must believe you are a blessing don't get a job and simply because they said we don't know what kind of employee you are no I am a blessing there is an advantage in your life by reason of Christ and his life and his word that dwells within you everywhere you go you are a blessing do you believe that when Jacob went to the house of Laban he knew that he was a blessing and when Laban began to multiply everything began to multiply Laban used divination to inquire and they told him it was on account of the presence of Jacob so when Jacob wanted to leave he exchanged his daughters to prolong his stay that you are such a blessing that your boss in office will stay from the day you stepped here the only thing you should bring or your value your physical technical skill is not the only thing you should bring to an organization you are the ark bearer you are taking the ark the presence of God to that organization as soon as you arrive like the ark of God in the house of Obed Edom things begin to shift and change May that be your testimony. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Get to a point where people long to see you come and visit them. They will even say you've not visited us in two weeks because the last time you came, as you were going out, it's as though you kept some souvenirs. Several things started coming, doors opening, great things happening to us. My husband who was not serious with God, started becoming serious studying the word going to church please come again there are people as you are living the same i don't know what you brought but as soon as you left police came as soon as you left somebody hit a car somewhere and they came to say who is the owner of this house as soon as you left i changed that negative atmosphere over you i say it again i changed that negative atmosphere over you Shout, I am a blessing. Let the devil hear it. Say, I am a blessing. Carry this mentality. I am a blessing. If someone meets you and say, what do you have to offer? Well, I may not have the technical skill, but there is one thing I have. The presence of God. And such as I have, it can be a gift to you. Listen, spiritual blessings are real gifts. They can be given. The Bible speaking about Abraham said he gave Isaac everything he had, but to all the sons that came from his concubines, he gave them gifts. He gave them physical gifts, but he put something on Isaac and said, go. Are we together now? So you can greet someone with a handshake. I made a covenant with God. You know, I've, I've said it and I say it with every sense of humility and responsibility that nobody should have to see me twice to be blessed. If it is true that he lives within me, that I actually say good morning, no, I will go for a retreat. It's true. You just lean near somebody's shop to take a bottle of minerals. And as soon as you drop the empty bottle and leave, you left something there. Customers just begin to come and the person, what happened? If handkerchiefs and aprons can carry the presence and the power of God, 
then it means that an overflow is like it's dripping like rain listen this is the mentality i am giving you if you carry the mentality of a needy and a beggar one who is waiting for people to be i'm not just talking in terms of uh, finances and the rest no you carry spiritual value it shouldn't lead to pride but there is a healthy confidence that you should have are we together now yes Someone brings you to his house and says, God bless you, this and that. You are done discussing and you say, well, could we say a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, this man has granted us access here. We leave the peace of God with you and you walk away. Usually people will casually say amen and then the blessings begin to follow. Koinonia, please hear me. Understand what you carry. Understand the spiritual implication of the anointing and the power and the grace that you have. You may not have physical cash in your pocket, but do not act like somebody who is empty. You sang that song there, that there is an overflow. The Holy Ghost lives in you. There is a spirit in man. You are not a curse. No. Always remember Genesis 12 and verse 3. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed indoctrinate yourself i am not a blessing i am I'm, I'm not a curse i am not a luggage to anybody's destiny no reject it perhaps you are staying in the house of someone maybe um, your biological parents are not there and you are staying in the house of someone if they begin to complain that you are not a blessing go back and pray this scripture Lord you didn't bring me to this house to cause pain and inconvenience in the name of Jesus I am not a curse I declare that the life of God within me find expression and become a blessing in this house are we together you go for a job interview in addition to your certificate you carry the presence of god remember these are the mysteries that grant us command in the name of jesus beyond the job thank you very much sir the bible says if you go to a city and they receive you it says let your peace remain that means peace is, is you can distribute it that man will return back home and the wife that is like tom and jerry fighting up and down we say honey you are welcome home and he says tell me you are joking you left your peace a deposit of your peace what is suddenly happening i think we should not fight in this house again the man will call you and say give that guy the job the last one the one i sent out in annoyance bring him back i have discerned that the lord is with you may that be your testimony there is nobody who is a believer in Christ. There is nobody who is connected to this vision who should be a cause. The moment people start complaining that your life is an inconvenience, go for a retreat. Lord, I am a blessing. I am not a curse. In the name of Jesus Christ, my friends cannot run away from me. If there is anything, any climate, any atmosphere that is not of God, I banish it out of my life. In the name of Jesus, I declare I am a blessing. You travel to Lagos, you travel abroad, you travel from Abuja. As you are walking out of this service, in the name of Jesus, I expect favor. Because I am in covenant with the elements of creation. By the power of the Holy Spirit, good happens to me all the time. Exceeding great and precious promises. Someone just calls you and says, where are you? We're just done with Koinonia, I'm going home. Hold on, hold on, don't go, just wait there. God gave me an instruction. Aha, uh -huh. now it is working. What is the instruction? He said, I should bless you. I should bless your father. I should bless your mother. Where are they? Listen, you will never be able to share some testimonies till you believe these things. The faith to engage these promises. The faith to engage these promises. Write this down, please obedience to God's Word obedience to God's Word is the only way to commit God's integrity to perform on your behalf obedience to God's Word is the only way to commit God's integrity to perform on your behalf you want to see the power of God made manifest in your life 
follow the path of obedience obedience is the only way to commit God's integrity to perform the only way to make his power manifest in your life you have that down please write this down too no amount of sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience no amount of sacrifice and I tell you this from the depth of my heart no amount of spiritual sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience first Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22 watch this now Samuel said had the Lord as great delight in bond offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams next verse it says for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry because thou has rejected the word of the Lord he has also rejected thee from being king he was saying this to Saul there is no amount of sacrifice that will replace obedience if God says go left even while you are praying and you go right you are in disobedience are we together yes when Hannah cried she was crying in disobedience together with the young lad when the Lord appeared he said go back to your mistress your mistress follow that path of obedience many of us do not understand the power of obedience there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to penury. I will not give and yet I must increase. I am brilliant. And God says, I respect you. Go ahead. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He says, for by your words you are justified. By your words you are consumed. I will not speak. Things will just happen. I, I, I have a special, there's a way I understand myself. Even Jesus Christ declared, spoke, spoke about his death and his resurrection. That you destroy this temple and in three days I will rebuild it again. He was speaking of the temple of his body. So if you don't find yourself speaking the word of God over your life and destiny, you step into your office, you step into your shop. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands and I declare, it is blessed. You are the works of my hands. When you are praying, don't pray blind prayers. Pray scripture-based prayers. Scripture-based prayers are the kinds of prayers that are consistent with the will of God. The Bible says if we ask anything according to his will. So don't just ask, what is the scriptural basis for your asking? Lord bless me today based on what the Bible declares this is the day the Lord has made and it says I will rejoice and be glad in it I expect to rejoice and to be glad in it is that true yes in the Lord's prayer he said when you pray say give us this day our daily bread your daily bread is not just loaf of bread your daily bread means every supply that makes for your sufficiency so when you wake up in the morning, prepared by the benevolence of the Father, is the daily bread for that day. Insist that it arrives that day. This is what makes the life of other people look like they are magicians. And then other people wonder, why is this thing working for others? And yet it's not working for others. As a couple, you can hold your hands and pray. In the name of Jesus, the Bible declares that if two shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done unto them. We decree and declare that in this Abuja, by the mystery of Rehoboth, God is giving us our own space. We declare it. As at the time you are speaking, there may not be anything there. We obtain the grace and we obtain the intelligence to make this happen. And the Spirit of the Lord begins to lead you, line upon line. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Lord, I refuse to be in want because I make you my shepherd. I yield to your wisdom.
this is the believer's advantage most believers will not live this way and yet wonder why their lives do not reflect the glory of God the gift of a man the Bible declares makes room for him is that true and brings him before great men so in the name of Jesus I declare that laziness is out of my life I will shape my gift since I see that it is connected to favor that every time I come across people let it be that I am valuable enough to be a blessing to them don't just start thinking now that this person is here I am going to get something no think like a giver it is more blessed to give than to receive I'm not talking of giving money. There are many other valuable things you can give. Say amen. amen. You're a man of God here in ministry. I want you to listen. Ministry is not going to grow because you want it to grow. These are the forces that you engage. The force of prayer, the force of value, the force of the word, the force of the power of the Holy Spirit. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, the Bible says, I will draw all men. Is that in your Bible? I will draw all men to myself. Wisdom. Many of us lack the requisite wisdom. It said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice that with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness doth not wisdom cry the bible says any man does any man lack wisdom let him cry unto god that giveth liberally lord i see that my decisions are not superior decisions i am sincere but i keep becoming a victim of foolish decisions i take responsibility and based on the integrity of your word i admit that i lack wisdom and i obtain by the spirit of wisdom superior wisdom that comes from above not sophia and the Bible says, everyone that asketh, receiveth. Lord, I am praying according to your will, so I give thanks because I receive answers to my prayer. That is a believer's prayer. Suddenly you find out that God begins to lead you to access materials. You will come for Koinonia that Sunday and here is a teaching on wisdom. You will go online and hear a message. Everything around you is flashing wisdom. That is God saying your answer has come. You settle down and you camp with the spirit of wisdom. Oh, I see. Now I can make superior decisions because wisdom is justified by her children and you begin to make very superior decisions and your life begins to rise. We believe you were blessed by the message you just watched. Let us know what stood out to you in the comment section. You can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos so more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages. We celebrate you and see you in our next video. Thank you.